fatty acids are the main building blocks of lipids in food and in our body. But they are generally not free because they are acidic and they cannot go around by themselves just like that. So they are mostly incorporated into other molecules. We already know that the vast majority of them is in triglycerides and then some in phospholipids or bound to cholesterol. The main distinction we have to make is based on their degree of saturation. We have saturated fatty acids, monounsaturated fatty acids and polyunsaturated fatty acids. This is how a saturated fatty acid looks like. As you can see, it is a long chain of atoms of carbon. Each carbon is bound to two other atoms of carbon along the chain, one on its left, one on its right, and then since carbon needs to make four bonds, the remaining two bonds are made with hydrogen. We say that this chain of atoms of carbon is saturated with atoms of hydrogen. This is why we call it saturated fatty acids, because all the remaining available bonds are filled with hydrogen. The first carbon atom of the chain binds to three atoms of hydrogen because it doesn't have to bind to a carbon before. At the other end of the chain, we have a carboxyl group, and this is what makes the molecule acidic. So just like sugars, fatty acids are made of the same three elements, oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon. However, there's much less oxygen in fatty acids, and chemically, this means they are more reduced, which is why they contain more energy. If we count the number of carbons in this molecule, we will count 18. This number can vary, and the difference between the different saturated fatty acids depends on the length of their carbon chain. This is the very same molecule, it's just another way of representing it. Each point is a carbon, each line is a bond between carbons, and hydrogens are not indicated. We can also write it like this, C18 for 18 atoms of carbon and a zero to indicate it's saturated. It also has its own name, this is stearic acid, which is a saturated fatty acid, 18 carbons long. It is actually the most abundant saturated fatty acid in our body. These are some other abundant molecules, they all have an even number of carbons. Most naturally occurring fatty acids have an even number of carbons. Now, this is a monounsaturated fatty acid, and specifically oleic acid. Again, this has 18 carbons, but this time you see two bonds between these two atoms of carbons. If you studied chemistry, you know this means that they share more electrons. But the practical consequence of this is that now these atoms of carbons don't have other two bonds available to make with hydrogen, but only one, so there's two less hydrogen atoms in this molecule compared with stearic acid still 18 carbons, but less hydrogen. Now the molecule is not any more saturated with hydrogen, and because there is only one of these double bonds, it's called monounsaturated. Mono for one, that is one unsaturation. If we count from the end, which is called the omega end of the fatty acids, in position 9 from the omega end, we have the double bond. So this is why we say that this monounsaturated fatty acid belongs to the omega 9 family. The first and only double bond is 9 carbons away from the omega end. We can also represent it like that, or we can write C18 for 18 carbons in the chain, 1 for 1 unsaturation, and omega 9 to indicate that this double bond occurs in position 9 from the omega end of the fatty acid. Another thing you notice is that after the double bond, there is a kink in the chain of carbons. This is because the two atoms of hydrogen are on the same side of the double bond and they kind of push the molecule so that it bends. The consequence of this is if you have many of these molecules together, you cannot pile them up as neatly as the saturated fats, whose chains are all straight and so they can be packed tightly together. Unsaturated fats are less compact. Because of this, fats that are rich in saturated fatty acids will be solid at room temperature, for example, butter, while fats that are rich in unsaturated fatty acids will be liquid at room temperature, for example, olive oil. We said that normally the two hydrogen at the unsaturation end up on the same side of the double bond, and this causes the kink in the molecule. This is what occurs naturally most of the time, and is what we call the cis form of the fatty acid. However, it can also happen that the two hydrogens end up on opposite sides of the double bond, and that is what we call the trans form of the fatty acid. In this case, the chain stays linear, 
it doesn't bend. So it will behave very similarly to the saturated fatty acids. For example, it could be more compact and solid at room temperature. Trans fatty acids are mostly man-made and rarely occur naturally in food, although there are some naturally occurring short-chain trans fatty acids in milk. But most of them come from human processing of food, and in particular the process of fat hydrogenation, which we will see later. When an unsaturated fatty acid has more than one double bond, two or more, we refer to it as a polyunsaturated fatty acid. This molecule here is linoleic acid, a very important polyunsaturated fatty acid, one of the two essential fatty acids in our diet. It has two double bonds. If we count from the omega end, the first double bond is in position 6, so it belongs to the omega-6 family. It is 18 carbons long, so we can indicate it as C18-2 for two unsaturations. The other nutritionally relevant family of polyunsaturated fats is the omega-3 family, so fatty acids in which the first double bond is located three carbons away from the omega end. This molecule here is alpha-linolenic, which is the other essential fatty acids in our diet. It is 18 carbons long with three double bonds. We have made all of our examples with fatty acids that are 18 carbons long for a reason. You already know that the length of the chain can vary, but 18 is the preferred number. In our body, most fatty acids are 18 carbons long, especially those incorporated in triglycerides for energy storage in our adipose tissue. It is not surprising, then, that the only two essential fatty acids in our body, linoleic omega-6 and alpha-linolenic omega-3, are both 18 carbons long. Now, this is how a triglyceride is made. You should recognize three fatty acids on the right, in this case three molecules of stearic acid. The molecule on the left is a sugar made of three carbons, called glycerol. Glycerol forms covalent bonds on each of its carbons with the carboxyl end of the three fatty acids. So with the condensation reaction and the elimination of three molecules of water, a bond is formed between the oxygen and the acidic end of the fatty acid and the carbon on the glycerol. So this is a triglyceride. Now the three fatty acids are not free anymore, but clumped together, and they are not acidic anymore because the acidic group is occupied in a bond. This triglyceride can now be stored in our adipose tissue and then broken down again when needed for energy production.